Franken. In this video, we are going to talk about Vim. So Vim is just a command line text editor, um, but more importantly, it's a set of key bindings that you can use in a variety of programs. I picked up Vim because it was on every server that I logged into. So when I needed to edit some files on a server, I just used Vim, or when I'm on the command line and I just need to edit a readme or something like that, I can just open it in Vim instead of having to find it in a file browser and an editor and all of that stuff. So Vim's good, it's uh, just there, so we're going to learn how to use it, but just the important stuff. We're not going to go crazy into all of the optimizing workflow stuff. This is just uh, what you need to be relatively productive with it. So you just run Vim by uh, typing Vim and giving it a file name. If the file doesn't exist, it'll still open it and you'll be able to write to the file after. So here we just have an example file with some JavaScript in it. Uh, you can move around using either the arrow keys or the J key for down, K up, uh, H and L for left and right, and that's it. Uh, it doesn't really matter, despite what people will tell you. Um, so what we're in right now is command mode, which is why like when I type J, it doesn't enter the character J. This is command mode. Uh, it's the mode that you get when you enter Vim. So now we're going to go into insert mode, which is the I want to type some text stop being Vim Vim mode. So we type I, it puts us into insert mode, and then we can type there bar equals one. Then when we want to exit insert mode, you hit escape. And now you're back in command mode. JK, JK, JK. Cool. So a few more things that you'll want to know is uh, how to delete things, how to change things, and how to specify uh, other characters that you want to do things relative to. So uh, for example, I'm just going to insert foo one, two, three right? And escape. And we'll hit zero to go to the start of the line. Uh, but that's not important. Okay. So if we want to change this, uh, take a wild guess, what's the key binding for change? We hit C. Okay. Now we need to tell it what we want to change. If we want to just change the character uh, under the cursor, we can just hit the right arrow or the L key. And then we can just put something else in there, like foozle, right? And we'll go back to the start of the line. Now, if what we want to change is a word, which is like an identifier in, in most languages, including JavaScript, if we want to change a word, we hit C and then W for word, OK? And if we want to undo this in command mode, you just hit the U key. Uh, if you want to redo it, I don't know what the key binding is, so now we're going to see the command, uh, the typed command. I don't even know what it's called. There's There's got to be names for all of these things. So we hit the colon key, and it brings up this little prompt at the bottom of the window. And we can type redo and hit enter. And it will redo the operation. And we could type undo. So all of these letters are just bound to those commands, and they're more convenient than typing the commands every time, but if you don't know a command, you can just try to type something in there that looks like it makes sense. Awesome. Moving on. So we had change word, which is CW. Now, what if we want to change in parentheses? So uh, change, I for in, and then we'll hit the left parentheses, and it's replaced the text in the parentheses with nothing, and we can type three, four, five. So that's something that you commonly use. Um, another thing that you might want to use is the visual selection mode. So instead of like having to type all these like weird, uh, weird commands for, you know, change eight characters or whatever, uh, you can just hit the V key, which gives you something like the drag and select that you get in a normal editor. And then you can just navigate around and highlight the selection, and then use a key such as C for change, and you can put something else in there. Okay, 
Uh, the V key also works on multiple lines. So if you want to hit V and go up, uh, you can do this. And then if you want to go to the start of the line, you can tap zero and it'll uh, move the selector to the start of the line. And then we could, for example, hit C to change it, or we could hit D to just delete it. And when we hit D, it doesn't take us out of command mode. There's little difference otherwise. So we're going to undo that. Um, one more thing that you'll use a lot. So we're going to select all of these lines. And we are going to hit the angle bracket, so like shift period, to indent. And we're going to hit it again to dedent. We're going to select the text again, and then hit it to dedent. Cool. So that's your basic indentation. Um, I'll make another video for the basic configuration of Vim, which tells it how to do things like indent by default. Uh, so one more thing. So we did uh, change in parentheses. What if we want to change until parentheses? So that would be C, T for till, I don't know, parentheses. Okay. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you can remember those commands, the change, the delete, uh, change in, change word, just those basic things, visual selection, indent, dedent, and you're able to use Vim relatively productively. It shouldn't take long and you don't need to learn all sorts of crazy syntax and Vim script and all of those things. So after this, I'll make a video about how to configure Vim. Very basic, how to install CoffeeScript or whatever you like to use uh, syntax highlighting from GitHub. All right, I'll see you in the next video.